in XRD analysis, this two theta is very confusing. Sometimes people call it reflected angle, sometimes people call it scattering angle, and sometimes people call it diffracted angle. In this video, I'm going to clarify the differences among these confusing words. Reflection and diffraction are the two confusing words in XRD analysis. This is basically Bragg's law and people confuse a lot. Sometimes they call this theta reflection angle, sometimes they call scattering angle, sometimes they call diffraction angle. If we look into the XRD pattern, an X axis, the peak positions are basically represented by two theta. This two theta is basically called diffraction angle, not reflection angle, not scattering angle. Sometimes the scattering is also confused with diffraction. Let's discuss in detail. Uh, this is basically the lattice, the, the powder sample, and we know that crystalline material contains uh, orders in atoms. This, this is basically one plane here. We can see the atoms are arranged in a uh, pattern order. This is another plane. From Bragg's law, this D is basically the interplanar spacing between two planes. This is this is the interplanar spacing. So this is here the incident X-ray. Uh, when this X-ray strike the the planes here, so the angle between this incident X-ray in the plane is basically incident uh, angle. This theta is basically incident angle. This is also the same theta here. And here, if you look into this ray two, this is also called the theta here. Now, reflection basically means that when the, 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 the X-ray basically reflected, bounce back, uh, so this is basically called a reflected angle. This is basically called another reflected angle here. Now, if you look into this ray here, this is also called the reflected angle. So this, this reflected angle and NC angle are always equal. In, in XRD pattern, this two theta is not reflected angle. This two theta is not ancient angle. Now let's come to the diffracted angle. Look, let's, let's consider this one here, this. When, when we shine this ancient X-ray here on this plane, so it's, it's get reflected here, right? But this X-ray is also uh, moving, going inside the uh, sample here because the X-ray is uh, uh, there, so it's high energy. So it has to go through this uh, sample here. Now, when it goes inside, so there is a scattering phenomena, we know, because how we explain this, they, they from the structure factor that X-ray basically scatter, X-ray basically scatter initially from electron, uh, then from atoms, and then from unit cell. This means that X-ray is just scattering inside. And those scattering, because they, they, this is we just for the explanation, we just shine two two rays there are many rays coming to the sample so uh, this another ray is now coming here and it's also scattering from the atom and uh, we know that this scattering is, uh, is sometimes uh, in a way that it reinforce uh, the, 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 the the rays the reflected rays here and we get diffraction we get interference and we get peaks here now, let me explain this in a nice way here now, look here, uh, the, the, the diffraction angle is basically uh, the, the, the transmitted X-ray here and the reflected X-ray here. This is basically the diffracted angle 2 theta here. If you consider this one here, so the, the ray 2 here, so this is the transmitted ray 2 here and this is now the reflected here. So now this is the 2 theta here angle. Right? This is the, the difference between the uh, reflected angle and diffracted angle. Here in the text, I explain the differences between reflection and diffraction, and I also compare with the scattering that how the scattering is different than the diffraction. Basically, diffraction and scattering are the same phenomena, and you can call that diffraction is the special type of a scattering here. So we can see here the the I, I will I will keep this in the description. I mean I'll also keep in the post reflection only take place from the surface or thin surface layer layer from atomic layer but diffraction take place throughout the entire bulk the entire volume here and we know that there the x-ray basically scattered from electrons atoms unit cell in all directions 
Now, now look the second one. Reflection basically take place at any angle. There is no fast and hard rule for this. But deflection can only take a place when there is a Broglie satisfaction. When this Broglie basically are satisfied, so that the deflection can take place. This is why we have the two theta uh, in the uh, X or D uh, spectrum. Uh, the, the, the peak, we only get the peak here once the Broglie law is satisfied. And that angle is basically called deflection. The third one is very important. In reflection, 100% intensity may be reflected from the surface, depending on the nature of the surface, while in deflection, only small fraction of the incident intensity is deflected because we know that uh, most of the uh, most of the x-rays scatter from the uh, planes and they are uh, arranged in a way that they cancel the effect of each other and we don't get peaks here so we only get peaks that when the uh, scattering uh, uh, x-ray reinforce each other and we get peaks here and this is very very rarely rarely happen this is why we rotate the sample and we always rotate the detector to get the the maximum chances for the diffraction